God, dear viewer, and welcome to the third series of our presentation. Remember that this week uh, we say that we are handling from nothing to something. And actually yesterday, I hope it was amazing to you. And uh, although, I, I just as I said, it's astounding. It's not something to be accepted when you talk about something just coming from nothing. But today I tell you something else, that in his own image, in his own image. And before we proceed, shall we pray? Father, speak unto our hearts. Inform us, what do you mean by in your own image? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I talked yesterday about the different theories that scientists have tried to use to explain the origin of things. And there is another popular, there's a popular theory uh, which uh, Charles Darwin tries to explain the origin of man. It's a popular one because it's taught in school, taught in schools, and for uh, uh, kids maybe uh, for them to try to try to, to to be made to understand themselves. We know that a human being uh, claimed to have originated from uh, uh, monkeys or rather baboons. Why talk about the gendrophas? Uh, we talk about uh, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, and now they claim that we're in Homo sapiens sapiens. So the origin of man is just uh, traced from a primate, traced from a primate. And then the primate is years moved, and they would say it is billions and billions of years. And as years continue to move, they, this, this primate continue to grow. This primate continue to develop and to change uh, from, from, from able to upright. And then up to now, a man who is fully matured in terms of brain. So all these things that the scientists claim, or what Charles Darwin claimed, they have never been experienced again. They've never been seen again. We have never seen a primate evolving uh, from, from that state and developing maybe to a kid who at the end of the day maybe develops to an adult or a human being. We have seen something different. But... All the same, as I told you yesterday, that a human being tries to explain the origin of things. But the, the problem is that when you, when you take that man or that scientist to the origin of origins, that is where they lose the sight. As I said yesterday, they will tell you that something came from another thing, something came from another thing. But when you go to the last thing that brought all things, you ask them, where, is that, where did that thing come from? They'll never be able to explain. That is why we are now talking about in his own image. And actually trying to respond to questions where demand came from. I know that parents, when they would be asked by their children, where, 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 where did we come from? Where did we get this baby from? They'll tell them it was from a shop. We bought the baby from a shop. I remember my mother telling me that, telling me that and I would wonder, where are these supermarkets where kids are, are, are bought, where ki kids are sold? Only later to realize that maybe kids are gotten through a very, very f a different manner, different from whatever they were telling us. Maybe it was shameful. It was sh they were shy or they were in a way shy to tell us the origin of a, a baby. Actually, because it was from nothing. As we said yesterday, it was from nothing. But from that nothing, by the way, there is something. From that nothing, there is something. That nothing, we say that that nothing is God. Why nothing? Because we are, we are just finite and God is infinite. We are mortals and God is immortal. So we cannot be able to comprehend him with our own minds. But we can see him through nature. We can so see him through different experiences. And even when as Christians, we talk to him through prayer. So I want us to read from the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27. I know it's a popular uh, uh, verse that people read, but I don't know whether when you are reading, have you ever under, tried to answer some questions? That is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, some questions regarding maybe the origin of human being and actually the, the nature and uh, the state and the characteristic of a human being. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Mark these words. In his own image. Actually, 
those words in his own image, they have been used in a way to explain this man. That is what we say maybe in English, they can be termed as a, uh, maybe they are adjectives. These words can be, uh, they have been used as adjectives to explain more about this man. It was not just a man that was created. Remember, there are other things that were created and there was no much explanation. We'll be just told that God said, let there be light. There was light. We'll just be told. Then God says, let this sea produce sea creatures. That is fish among other animals. We'll be told that let God say, let there be crawling insects, and the insects came. But when it reaches to man, we are told in his own image. In his own image. So that creates an emph or it emphasizes something. There's something that we are, we, we, he wants us to understand from the Holy Scriptures. That man was just not any creature. That man was not just any creation, but actually a reflection of the creator. A reflection of the origin of all things. Remember the theories that I mentioned to you, they just try to degrade man into, into some primates and they try to, to show that it's only those who are fit, the men who are fit or human beings who are fit, who will be able to survive uh, in, in life. And again, the, the life of man or the period when man is supposed to live doesn't go beyond uh, maybe where it, life can sustain them. Maybe after particular years, they fade and then nothing, they go back, uh, they, they, they go back to nothing. But we get something different. That man being formed in the image of God. And you know, you know what we mean by the image. Because an image is a reflection of the reality. Did, did I say that well? Let me repeat. That an image is a reflection of the reality. So what do we say? That man is a reflection of God. So God, after creating all the other things, he created trees, he created even good flowers, he created even uh, very beautiful birds or beautiful birds, he created even uh, uh, some wonderful seas, some wonderful creatures that God created, others that we have never even seen, which are under the seas, in the deep seas. We have never seen them. We just see them maybe in pictures. We just see them in documentaries. They are very beautiful. But those creatures could not reflect the reality or could not reflect God. The only creature that could, could reflect God was a human God, human being. Isn't that amazing? To understand that you are just a reflection of the reality, all of the real origin of origins. Isn't, is that not does that not bring another state in a human? Does, does that not bring another meaning concerning a human being? Because all the other theories were talking over something, something that just came from another animal, and then at the end of the day, nothing else apart from those who can survive, then those who cannot survive, they just die, they just get away. But we are told that each and every human being is a reflection of God. And that means regardless of the challenges that you pass through, regardless of the situations that you pass through, regardless of the state that you are in. You know, most of us define ourselves by the state of our finance. Others define themselves by the state of maybe how are their families firm? How are their families good? How are their families happy? How, ed how educated are their kids? how many projects they have been able to start and succeed, how many businesses they are running and they are succeeding and they have money in the bank. But that is not the definition of a human being because the scripture talks about in the image of God, all in his own image, he created him. He created them male and female. So the only definition for human being is that you are a clear of the reality. You are the clear of the real origin of things, origin of origins, who is God.
That means that as the scripture tells us in the book of Matthew, that one you can read the Matthew chapter 6 and verse 26, that if he is concerned about a sparrow, and you know very well that a sparrow could not reflect the image of God. The sparrow could not, God didn't use a sparrow to, or didn't create a sparrow in his own image. But a human being in his own image, that tells you that if he concentrates with the life of a sparrow, then he really concentrates with the life of a human being. When you are sick, God cares. When, there is, when you are bereaved, God cares. When you don't have a job, God cares. When your children are passing through hardships, they are immoral, they are against the way you are guiding them, God cares. Why? You are a reflection of his own image. And there is, God is so concerned about human being than any other creature or any creation that he created in the, in the world. You know, people are talking much about, uh, okay, climate, taking care of the, of, or maybe uh, what you can say, what you call uh, taking care of the climate, simply because maybe the weather is becoming bad, and actually at the end of the day, there's what you call global warming, global warming, sorry, and other effects that, are, that happen out of the poisons that are exposed in the, in, the, in the air. But the problem is that God, by the way, though he is concerned about the climate, though he is concerned about the trees, he is not concerned in them more than he is concerned in human being. There's nothing that God cannot give for the sake of human being. That tells you there should be no worry in your life than to only trust in God, than, than only to trust in the origin of origins and to commit all your ways unto him. And maybe the last verse that I'd like us to read, that is from the book of uh, uh, Psalms chapter 8 and verse 4, where the psalmist even wonders, what is this human being that even uh, God created him in such a state. Let us go to the book of Psalms chapter 8, and you allow me to read from verse, uh, that is verse 5, for us to understand more uh, about this human being. 8 verse 5, uh, allow me to start from verse 4, which reads, that is Psalm chapter 8 verse 4 and verse 5 reads, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. In fact, uh, the writers or theologians, when they try to um, locate the original version of the original text, you know, there's what you call textual criticism, where uh, texts are, are, are criticized according to their origin. They claim that the, word, that the initial words were not angels. Were not that man was made lower than the angels. It was man that you, for you have made him a little lower than yourself, God. Man was just created a little lower than God. That is where you find some versions saying God, because that is what was there in the original language. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. My brother and my sister, God is concerned with your affairs. Don't think that... God is never concerned about your life. God never alienates his people. We are the only one who can lose trust in him. We are the only one who can lose faith in him. Trust in God, both in, hardship and, both in hardships and when things are okay. Because he really cares. You just his own image. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you very much. Understanding that we didn't just come from primates, we, did, we didn't just come from nothing. Our life is not even based from psychoanal uh, psychoanalytic theories, funny theories that try to explain about the state of human being. But the way we grow, the way we live, the way we walk, the way we reason, the way we do our things, we are a reflection of yourself. We are your own image. And if you are concerned about li the life of a sparrow, which could not be used to reflect your image, or about us, let, uh, let us always trust in you. Let us always believe in you. There might be someone suffering somewhere. They may be suffering from sicknesses, others from bereavement. Others, they are being stung by the devil in different ways. I pray for peace in their lives. Take care of them. There might be someone there, Father, looking for a job. 
they are passing through hardships in their lives because they don't have something to place on the table. They don't have finances. I commit them unto that you may take care of them. Such that when they are walking further, they'll know that they are your image. They reflect you. Guide us, let us trust in you in everything. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And remember these words. You are an image of God. <laughs>